Hey guys, Claire here, and today I'm going to share with you some of my favorite children's books. And so these are like like children's books, meaning not novels for children. Otherwise, I would have more Oz books and more of like the Phantom Tollbooth and stuff like that. I'll probably make that a separate video. But these are books that I grew up reading when I was a really little kid and I absolutely adored them. And I actually kept all of them for my baby. So I'm really excited about sharing these books with my kid. I think it'll be so much fun. Uh, so yeah, let's get started. First book. This actually might not be appropriate for all ages, but I'm obsessed with this book. Um, it's called The Encyclopedia of Things That Never Were. And I poured over this book when I was a kid. My dad got it for my sister and I, and I just thought it was fascinating. And this is the one that I, this is my, the one my dad got me. Um, I think it might even be out of print, honestly, but it's beautiful. The illustrations are great. So it's an encyclopedia. For Unicorn, for instance, it says, a particularly beautiful creature once widespread throughout the Northern Hemisphere, known under different names in different countries, but now popularly known by its Latin appellation deriving from Unis, one, cornus, horn. And it goes into this whole thing as if it was a real thing about, you know, sort of, where it started, how it traveled, how it's a solitary creature, it's not a herd creature like most hooved animals. It goes into the whole thing. And that's what I love about this. It really acts as if all of these things are completely real and um, fully delves into it. And it's stunning. I mean, there's this huge section on Camelot where it talks about King Arthur's court. Um, there's a scary one about nymphs and witches, but it's fascinating. I love this book so much. Um, so yeah, it was written by Michael Page, Robert Ng Pen. I'm so happy I found I found this copy and held on to it when I, we were digging through my dad's library. So, so good. So this book is from a whole series of books called The Children's Hour. And this is their favorite mystery stories. But doesn't the cover illustration just make you want to open into it? I, I mean, it's this whole series is fantastic. So it has a ton of, first off, the end pages. What? Gorgeous. And this has like a ton of really fun, different mystery stories in it. So there's some that you might know of already, like they have um, a few Sherlock Holmes stories in here. I loved this one though. It's called The Forgotten Island. This was my favorite one that my dad would read to my sister and I. But I love this book. I love vintage children books, obviously, um, but this was just such a cool series, so loved it. And then continuing on that theme, um, my dad got me, my sister, my brother, and both of our cousins the full series of uh, this book called uh, Childcraft. So I think there's probably like, I want to say like 13 or so books in the series. I just grabbed one. This is the Folk and Fairy Tales one. But I mean, isn't this so lovely? I just think it's darling. And then same thing. I mean, the end page is stunning. And it has you know, all of the stories. So you can even see here on the title page, you can see they have Jack and the Beanstalk, there's Hansel and Gretel, there's the three bears with Goldilocks, the three little pigs, you know, just all of it, the tortoise and the hare. So just so fun. Oh my God, look at the kitten with the book. Anyway, just so cute. Absolutely love this whole series is amazing. So if you can get your hands on it, it's definitely worth it. All right, well now more into the ones that I, you know, are a little more familiar. So I loved the Berenstein Bears. And this was my favorite one, No Girls Allowed. I thought that they, this was just, for some reason, I thought this was the best book out of it. And I love the Berenstein Bears. My dad hated Papa Bear. He thought he was like Homer Simpson level dumb and found it kind of like offensive. Like he was like, dads aren't that dumb. And I was like, okay, dad. But um, anyway, it's just such a fun book. I love it. And it's, uh, yeah, just absolutely just the best. So. Bernstein Bears forever. Obviously, Madeline. I mean, the illustrations alone are absolutely gorgeous. And this is such a classic. I'm sure like all of you guys have looked through Madeline, but just so beautiful. And it's so, such a simple book. And the cool thing too, is that if you have a child that's very young, um, but just starting to read, they could read this book. They can get along with it. I mean, the words are very simple, has beautiful illustrations. So this is definitely a favorite. This one's kind of random. Um, I don't know anyone else who read this book, um, but my mom got this and it's such a beautiful story. Um, it's called The Rain Babies. And just, I mean, the illustrations are just, it's something I've kind of been geeking out over for children's books. But just, I mean, look at this, like, 
beautiful. And the whole story is about these people that find this old couple, they don't have any children of their own, find these tiny silver haired babies after a storm. And they, you know, go on to protect them and take good care of them. And I don't want to give away the ending of the book, um, but they're given a gift in exchange for taking good care of the brain babies. And it's a really sweet, beautiful story. But anyway, I love the illustrations. So gorgeous. And then this one I read when I was a baby because my mom's Australian. So Possum Magic was a big part of what I read, and I, I love the illustrations so much, these beautiful watercolor illustrations. And it's all about Grandma Possum and um, her grand, her grandchild, Hush. And it's just so cute. You follow them on their little kind of adventures through the outback. So here they are with kookaburras and wallabies. Grandma Poss made bush magic. She made wombats blue and kookaburras pink. She made dingoes smile and emus shrink. But the best magic of all was the magic that made Hush invisible. That's pretty fun. But isn't that just such beautiful illustration? I love all the little speckles and stars for Grandma Poss's magic and the transition of him becoming invisible is just too darn cute. But anyway, so good. If you're an Aussie, you totally read this book. It's great. Or maybe not, maybe I'm just assuming Aussie. It's like how I assumed everyone grew up watching Unico and the Puppets. No. No, just me. <laughs> it's freaking weird, by the way. It's like an odd anime thing. I barely have to reference this. Oh my God, where the wild things are. It's so amazing. Yes, everyone knows it's great. Maurice Sendak is great. This one is falling apart. I probably have to get the binding fixed. As a little girl, I didn't really relate to Max very much because I was not wild. I was like kind of like people pleasing and nervous. So I would be like, wait, what? Like, I promise I won't be mad. So this idea of like a wild kid being naughty, like, like what? No. So I did not relate, but who knows? Maybe I'll have a naughty little boy and then he'll be totally into it. This one's hilarious because this is my dog. Buster is this dog. Like it's insane. Buster's right here off camera being noisy. You are. And he looks identical to this dog, Harry. But I love this book. It's so freaking cute. It's about a dog that goes out and he gets so dirty that his family doesn't recognize him and he does all of his tricks and they're like, I don't know who this dog is, so weird. He's just so damn dirty. And then he like breaks into the house and takes a bath and then they go, oh my God, it is you. So Buster, watch out. Yeah, could be you. And then this one, I loved this book with this little bird who would run around just chirping at like, it was the, he would ask, are you my mother to the weirdest objects? Like this crane bulldozer situation. I just thought it was the funny, I, I don't know why I thought this was the funniest book when I was a little kid, but it was also, this is a great one if you have young children for them to read along to. It's really interesting. And, um, you know, the words are simple, but the story is really funny and you know, the bird, he ends up getting deposited back in the nest. So, you know, don't worry. He didn't get left out or anything. Um, but yeah, so charming. Such a cute little book. Well, I know he's huge now, right? By the way, I feel like the last time Buster was on camera, he was 20 pounds lighter. Um, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed learning a little bit about some of my favorite children's books. Uh, these are so fun to read. I loved going back through them and digging out all of my favorites from when I was a little kid. Also, I'm definitely gonna do another video on some of my favorite children's novels. I read almost all the Oz books when I was a kid and oh, I love those so much. But please comment below. I would love to hear about what your favorites are, what Buster's favorites are. That's right. And um, please like the video if you like it and I'll see you later. Bye guys.